and welcome to another edition of Inside the Pylon First Sound. I am Matt Caraccio, and today we're going to be looking at wide receivers, and we're going to continue the discussion we had on the previous edition, and we're going to be focusing on a player that I'm actually kind of high on. I think he has a role in the NFL, and that's Minnesota wide receiver K.J. May. The senior Golden Gopher is five foot eight, 194 pounds. He's 21 years of age, and last year he had 73 receptions for 773 yards and five touchdowns. Today we're going to be focusing on a couple of traits again, but again, there's so many different wide receiver traits to be aware of. Athleticism, play speed, football IQ, blocking, releases, and in the last episode we checked out athleticism and hands. Today we're going to be focusing on separation quickness and route running. Something to remember about separation quickness is really what you're trying to capture here is what does the wide receiver do at the top of his route? Is he sudden? Is he explosive? Does he create instantaneous separation versus man? And I think that's really important to point out. When you're in the NFL, man coverage is where you need to be able to win. So you need to be sudden and explosive out of your breaks. And what I mean by this is you're looking at the wide receiver's hip levels. When he's actually getting into his break, is his hips low? Uh, is he driving off the insteps of his feet and exploding out of his route? And he needs to be able to do this versus man coverage. That's where he needs to be able to create that separation. Again, zone coverage, you're really looking, again, this is, zone coverage I think is a little bit more of a mental processing issue, meaning like do you understand and recognize their zone coverage? But still, you want to see that they're able to recognize zone coverage. Are they able to throttle down, find open field, and make themselves available for their quarterback? The other thing you want to look at is how do they win at the tops of their routes? Do they use lower body fakes? Like, do they use stick moves at the top of their route? Do they fake outside with their left foot, their outside foot, let's say? And then do they go inside and try to cross the face of the defender? Do they use head and shoulder fakes? So, for example, do they feign going outside with their head and shoulders only to stay vertical and get that separation that they need? Do they use strength when the receiver collisions a defensive back at the top of his route? Is he able to shed, disengage quickly, and get out of his break fast so he can be an open target for his quarterback? Overall, you want to kind of see how are they transitioning in and out of their breaks. Are they losing speed? Are they losing balance? Are they using the right footwork? Some routes that I've found that have really helped me, and these are things that I've picked up along the way from other great coaches and analysts and people that I admire, is when you're looking at routes, I love to evaluate curls and comebacks. And I like to do that against all wide receivers. I think curls and comeback routes do a nice thing. I think they do a great job of really isolating a player's explosiveness. When you're talking about X and Z receivers, so you're talking guys that are lined up outside the numbers, I like to see what they do on their in-breaking and out-breaking routes. So, when they're doing their speed cuts, for example, and they're planting that inside foot, if it's like, let's say, an out route, and they're planting that inside foot at a 45-degree angle, are they able to generate that explosion out of their break and immediately show that flexibility to get their shoulders back parallel to the line of scrimmage and whip that head around so they can see their quarterback get their hands up and again make themselves available targets when you're evaluating slot receivers i think it's all about change of direction because they're off the line of scrimmage already so they have that opportunity already to get a nice clean release are they very explosive and shifty in and out of their breaks do they stay low their hips low and do they drive off their insteps and really get separation immediately out of their breaks because they're supposed to be the wide receivers that are open for you sometimes as check down routes depending upon the pass play let's take a look at route running for outside receivers and slot receivers I think it's important to consider that the positions are different and we talked about earlier if you're an outside receiver, 
then there's a good chance that there are times where you're at the line of scrimmage. And when you're at the line of scrimmage, there's a big premium placed on your ability to get clean off the line of scrimmage. Can you get quality, quick releases? And because you're outside the numbers, there's a good opportunity usually for you to go up and get the football. Usually you're a bigger player. There's a premium placed on body control because the quarterback's got to throw the football over the trailing defensive back, especially if it's cover two and you're trying to hit that five iron, right? Hit that hole between the safety and the defensive back. You've got to be able to be a player that can go up, high point that football, usually through impact, and have the body control to land inbounds, control that football to the ground. Slot receivers, we talked about them earlier, really a heavy premium placed on athleticism. When you're looking at route running, it's important that you understand a little bit about the route tree. Obviously, you don't have to know the technicalities of in and every route. And I, I think some routes that have really helped me or some ways of understanding it that have really helped me is really understanding what's happening at the top of the route. When a player is actually throttling down, what's going on with their footwork? Is there any wasted footwork? Like Jerry Rice, for example, was incredibly good at this. One of the things that made Jerry Rice so quick, meaning his play speed was so fast, had to do not just with his time speed. His time speed wasn't really great when it came down to the NFL Combine. But his play speed was outstanding because he just had a very efficient level of understanding in what footwork he needed in order to make sure he was able to get in and out of his breaks quickly. So when you're talking about an out route, for example, you don't want to see a player really pivoting off that outside foot. Because if they're pivoting off that outside foot, then there's a good chance their body is going to get out of balance. They're not going to be able to separate from the defender. And there's a chance that the defender is going to be right there to break it up. And at the next level, really running crisp routes, meaning good footwork. Are they being efficient at their top of the routes? Are they breaking down within four steps, hitting that pivot foot or that pressure foot, that pressure step, and accelerating out of their break. So route tree is important. Understanding of coverages. Do you understand how to kind of read that triangle? What is the cornerback, inside linebacker, and safety doing? Usually a guy at the line of scrimmage is looking at the cornerback first to get an indication of the coverage. Then he's looking at the safety to get an indication of the coverage. And then usually the linebacker is kind of confirmation of what he should already know. So does he understand what the coverage is? And is he using that understanding to improve the separation that he's creating? Like I said earlier, a receiver creates separation not just at the top of their routes, but throughout the entire route that they're running from their release through their vertical stem to the actual break point and out of their route. Does he have a good vertical push? I can't overemphasize vertical push enough. You want to make sure that the wide receiver is not false stepping at the line of scrimmage. He needs to be exploding off of his snap, off the snap of the football. He needs to be exploding into his route. And he needs to not false step because if you've got a good vertical push, then what you're doing is you could immediately be putting that cornerback on skates. You're putting him on his heels. You're getting him uncomfortable because he doesn't want you that close. He wants to be able to react to what you're doing. Of course, if it's bump and run coverage, that's a totally different tactic altogether. But a good vertical push, no matter what the actual route is, you have to sell that go route in order to to put a defensive back on his heels. Does he set up his breaks? Is he really good at using those head and shoulder fakes? Is he really good at using his release to create additional separation right at the line of scrimmage? Does he work back on curls and comeback routes, in and out routes? Is he working downfield or is he working upfield? I mean, these are important distinctions because if you're fading away from your quarterback on, let's say, a dig route, then what you're allowing is more space for that defensive back to go in and make a play. So is he able to cut across the field on a dig route and work a little bit more upfield to grab that football at its highest point? These are some little things you want to see. Curls and comeback routes, very rarely do you see people really finishing those routes. Are they really driving back towards the football? Because driving back towards the football creates that additional separation. Again, separation quickness and route running, they're all going hand in hand. Do they shield the defender? On curls and comebacks, do they keep their body between the ball 
and the defender? Do they stack up defenders when they're running deep routes? Do they immediately get on top of the defender, again, keeping their body between the defender and the football? So let's go ahead and get a look at some film, and let's see if we can capture some of these traits in what we see. Just a reminder, the videos reviewed here are not hosted on the server, and the original content is not considered the property of myself or inside the pylon. Videos are considered to be used under the Fair Use Doctrine of the United States Copyright Law, Title 17, U.S. Code Sections 107 through 118. Videos are used for editorial and educational purposes only, and myself and Inside the Pylon do not claim ownership of any original video content. Inside the Pylon and myself do not use said video clips in advertisements, marketing, or for direct financial gain. All video content in each clip is considered owned by the individual broadcast companies. Here we are. It's KJ May and the Minnesota Golden Gophers against the Ohio State Buckeyes. And this is from this past season, 2015. And as we go into this film study, we're going to try to, again, really focus on those traits of separation quickness and what is K.J. May or who is K.J. May as a route runner overall. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Here he is. He's off the line of scrimmage, so you know he immediately has a cushion. He's playing against a defensive back in off coverage, so he knows he's going to have some separation or some, some cushion to work with. Let's see if he gets vertical on his first step. So what you noticed is he did a little bit of a hitch move. He false stepped ever so slightly, but you could definitely see that he's got his pads over his knees and he's driving off the line of scrimmage. He's driving right at the defender. The defender doesn't necessarily know where he's going to go. He's splitting the defender right down the middle. He's not indicating anything or giving anything away. So he goes in and he's driving into the defender's cushion. And if you noticed, right at the top of his route, he was actually, this is an in-breaking route. He throttled down with his inside foot and drove nicely off of his outside foot, getting good explosion. And if you notice, look at the separation he created between himself and the defender. That's a nice little route that KJ May ran. And in this play, you're going to see K.J. May. He's going to go ahead, and they're going to motion him across the formation, usually using motion to create either a better matchup or they're looking to create some additional room for him at the line of scrimmage. Clearly, he's off the line of scrimmage. So again, he's afforded that opportunity. And this is where I think he's going to win in the NFL. He's going to be a slot receiver. He's going to be a guy that I think is best suited to being off the line of scrimmage. And we want to see, again, as a route runner, what is he doing? Is he attacking this defender? Because it looks like this is his defender that will be covering him. As of right now, it appears to be some type of man coverage. Uh, but we'll see what happens as we snap the football. And he drives, and again, it's man. And it looks like this linebacker picked him up. And he's driving outside, so this is an out route. And he's able to catch the football, makes a nice reception through contact. And the one thing I want to point out here is as K.J. May is about to run this route, I think we get a better view in a moment, take a look at what he's doing at the top of his route. We want to look at separation quickness. And a lot of the reason why I don't love this route is because if you go back just a half a click, watch what he does at the top of his route. Take a look at his footwork. Okay, where is he really pivoting off of? It looks like he's pivoting off his outside foot on an outside breaking route. I would rather see him actually pivoting off his inside foot using a pressure step, which is a step that would be kind of at a 45 degree angle to the yardage lines. So if you can imagine his foot, which is really my cursor, being at a 45 degree angle, that would really put him biomechanically, I think, in the best place to really explode out towards the sideline. So you want to see now on this speed cut, his footwork isn't great, but let's see if he gets his shoulders around and right at his quarterback. And he does. Look at how quickly he gets those shoulders and the head around right back at the quarterback, creating a nice window for his quarterback to throw the football. And he does a nice job making that catch. All 
That's a really nice route by K.J. May. Let's go ahead and take a look at that route one more time. So the cornerback is on the inside. He's already beat because his shoulders are turned upfield. So K.J. May has every opportunity to beat him outside. Let's take a look at his footwork and what he does at the top of his route. So, boom. Okay. He does a way better job than he did on the last play getting separation. So, again, he's driving upfield. Let's see what his footwork looks like. Okay. He throttles down. Notice how his, he's breaking outside on an outside route, and he throttles down with that outside foot, and now he's pressure stepping, and he's going to push and explode outside. Look at how he gets separation right there, immediately getting his shoulders around, his head turned towards his quarterback, and his hands ready to catch the football. He does a nice job making a good hands catch right there and gets upfield. Great, great play. It's another great route by K.J. May. Let's see if we can take a look at that one last time. They're motioning to a bunch formation. K.J. May is off the line of scrimmage. Again, look at his explosiveness at the top of his route, and notice how good his footwork looks, how crisp it is. So that's an indication of a, a pretty solid route runner. What's nice about him is he attacks the leverage of the defender, expanding the defender out towards the sideline, does a nice four-step breakdown, pressure cutting off his outside foot, driving across the middle, getting his hands and his head and his shoulders around to make the reception and get upfield. And that was against Von Bell, who is actually one of the, the top, uh, one of the top safeties this season. I mean, he wasn't really in a great place anyway to make this play, but it's still a great play by K.J. May. This is a very nice route. He does a great job. This is the type of things you want to see from a route runner. It's a great job getting separation throughout. His Let's take a look here. This is a real indication of some good route running aptitude. If you notice, he does a nice job here taking a seam release, cutting to the inside of the defender, and watch what he does right there. He actually goes ahead and snaps his hips. He's going to take a vertical stem here now, and what he does is it's almost like he's baiting the defender to come closer to him, only to start going vertical upfield, and now what's happening back here where my cursor is is now the defender is virtually on top of him, and now that he's on top of him, with his shoulders turned upfield, he's basically his hips wide open. He has an opportunity to make a ton of space on this play. This is what a route runner can do for you. You can create separation while you're running your route. Take a look. There it is. Notice that he starts going upfield on that vertical portion of his route. Look at the shoulders on the defenders. The shoulders of the defenders are now upfield. He is already beat because this route is breaking across the middle of the field and he's going to get a tremendous amount of separation. Again, upfield, boom, gone. It's just a great route. This is another great route by KJ May. He's right over here off to the left side of the screen. And you'll notice there's man coverage, and he does a nice job beating the jam, and he's going to actually run a nice little in route, and the defender is going to be leaning on him. And what KJ does is KJ uses the defender's strength almost against him, and he actually creates better separation by leaning into the defender. Take a look. As he gets off the line of scrimmage, he gets vertical, and you'll notice that he swipes away the hands. And now right there, he was leaning on the defender. By leaning on the defender, he's able to cut across the middle and create additional separation. This is a part of K.J. May's game that I think is a little undervalued. He's very strong, guys. For a 5'8", 190-plus pound receiver, he does a good job of playing a very physical brand of football. It's another great route by K.J. May. 
So let's take a look at this play. In this route, KJ May is going to again stem to the inside. He's going to get vertical. And once he gets vertical, he does a nice job doing some head and shoulder fakes here to really sell that he might be going across the middle of the field. He's clearly getting this player to bite on that potential, and now he's going to get vertical. And what he does so nicely there is by getting vertical, he was able to throw off, again, a really great safety here. He was able to get vertical and almost get over the top of him. The ball was a little behind him, but look, boom, right there. That He sold that inside route he sold that he was going across the middle and then he's able to shift and change directions again look at the separation look at the difference the shoulders are turned he's getting vertical downfield driving shoulders over knees he does a really nice job here if that ball is on top of him at the right time that's a touchdown Wow. This is an excellent job by KJ May. It's man coverage. He's going to be running a little curl route. Take a look at his footwork and how much separation he gains. Boom. Look at the defender. Look at KJ May. Excellent separation. Hopefully we get a little bit of a better view in a moment and we can kind of dissect some of his footwork and see what he can do. So the one thing I will say is KJ May does not get vertical immediately on every one of his routes. The one thing I would like to see is at the snap of the football, one of the advantages a wide receiver has is knowing the snap count. And even though it might be a loud stadium, I'm sure it is, you got to be able to use that snap to your advantage because the defender is really at a disadvantage. He only goes when you go or when the football goes. So you've got to be able to get vertical immediately, especially at the next level. You're already somebody who's a little bit undersized, and you're going to have to use every single possible inch that you can to get yourself the advantage. So I'd like to see him get more vertical a little quicker. But right there, he does a great job. You can see that his hands and him, they're collisioning right here. He's driving off of his outside foot, and he's going to come back and turn around and create really great separation, and he's going to keep himself inbounds for the touchdown. On this route, KJ May does a nice job of, so, of showing his awareness and intelligence as a wide receiver. So if you take a look at his alignment, right now he's pretty close to the line of scrimmage. This looks like it's going to be some type of jam situation. So I would, I would like to see his posture just be a little bit more lively and ready. So as he drives off his front foot, he does a nice job of getting outside, again, avoiding the collision at the top of his break. He gets good separation here at the NFL level. Those are the types of routes he's going to see. He's going to get collisioned. He clearly has the strength to create that separation. And what I like is his awareness here. The quarterback gets flushed out of the pocket. He's supposed to be sitting there waiting for the football, realizes his QB is in trouble, immediately gets upfield and does a nice job of creating a window for his quarterback to throw into. He gets downfield. In terms of actual speed, I would think that he would probably be a little faster than this, but his quickness is definitely there, which is why I really feel like he profiles best to the slot. So you could definitely see that um, he has that potential to be a good slot receiver, but you would, you would think the deep speed would be a little bit more. As you can see, he's having a, a pretty good game. Eight receptions, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Not bad. This is one of those routes that I think I want to take a look at one last time. This particular route, KJ May gets off the line of scrimmage. You can see him right here at the top of your screen. He's leveraging the defender outside, trying to expand the defender so he can create some additional separation. He gets right there, and now it's a clearly a curl route, and he should be driving back to the football. I do not like this for a player like him. I think he's a very good wide receiver in the sense that I think he could be a very solid wide receiver at the next level, but you've got to drive back to the football and really high point that football because this defender is going to be all over you. 
at the next level. He's going to be right on top of you. This is what I like to call finishing the route. I'd like to see him finish that route a little bit more because I think he has that quickness and that ability to do it and really create yards after the catch. Not finishing this route mitigates the amount of yards you can create because part of it, part of the separation quickness is really finishing this route and getting the football and driving upfield. And I just don't like how he waits for it. So, I'd like to thank everybody for joining me on this little look at K.J. May. I think when you take a look at K.J. May as a wide receiver, I think some things that become clear are the following. As far as separation quickness goes, I think he has good separation quickness, above average. And a lot of that is because I believe that he is a solid to good route runner. So I think in the slot at the next level where you have that space being formation for you, where that actual depth off the line of scrimmage you're taking advantage of and using, I think he's a player who has the explosiveness and suddenness to win within the slot. I think his hands looked pretty good, and I think his ability to get upfield after the catch was pretty good as well. So overall, if we're focusing on separation quickness and route running, I would probably say I would say he's a separation quickness. He's got a good level of separation quickness. I think he's got good explosion out of his breaks. And I think as a route runner, he's definitely solid to good. I think there's some times where he's running a little bit off balance. He's pivoting off the wrong foot. He's not driving back towards the football on a comeback route. But I think that he's a player that plays with such a, a, an unbelievable level of strength for his size that I think he profiles nicely as a very functional, almost very good slot receiver at the next level. So I really want to thank you so much for spending your time with me and taking a look at KJ May. And please join me next time on another edition of Inside the Pylon, First Sound.